should be able to see that indeed we do have a nice oval pattern there. Same way with the back. If we compare it to our the one we were shooting for, it's reasonably close. Little, uh, little would have been nicer to have a little bit more material right there. I don't know what happened right there. Maybe I should have put more measurements, but it feels good. I think I can live with that. All right, so what we got going on here? The only thing remaining now is to carve this out. Now I laid this on right on the top of the vise, and then I drew inside, and we, I kind of get an idea what we need to cut, and then. Of course, how deep do I want to be? I want this to be, I like my head, the heads to stick out a little bit. And so I'll, um, I want that to fit right down there on the, on the mark. So the I think the best way to go about this is just to, uh, we'll just whittle it out real quick with, a uh, uh, by hand. For this sort of carving, my favorite knife are these, uh, that traditional, uh, Swedish, these are, uh, the, was this is made by Mura? Eric Frost Mura, Sweden. This is the same knife that they use. Um, last time we were in Sweden, we visited the, uh, oh, is it the province or state of Mura where they make the uh, the beautiful little uh, Dalahest horses, the little iconic Swedish horses. And this is the the knife, the exact knife that the, the guys were using. I actually went and, and I had them show me how to use them and they showed me how to sharpen them. And they said it was all about that little bump right there. And they're right. I have one without the bump and it's not as good. These are wonderful knives. Of course, Scandi scan grinds, so uh, to sharpen them, I mean, they're just so easy to sharpen. Any little stone, you just hold that angle there and just a couple passes. It's not a big production. It's just such a, such a good workhorse. If I can find these on Amazon, they were, they're not, they're not expensive. I'll put them up. I'll put one up there for you because they are they're just absolutely wonderful. So what we could do here now is we could just go along. We've got our mark right there and just kind of consistently we're just going to just shave that off there. It's a slow process, so put on a CS Forester book and uh, get a comfortable chair and just start working on it and uh, until we get a perfect fit. This is actually a, a quite enjoyable process. Now make sure you keep a reference, okay, that you put it when you're fitting uh, this, we've, you put it on the same, you orient it the same way each time. So I know that I've got this knot here um, and I know I'm putting forward, so I want to make sure it goes in. So once you get close, um, you, you're going to want to fit this and give it a light tap. Use something that's soft. Uh, I use a rawhide mallet or a rubber mallet. You want to work that back and forth a little bit. You may have to do this many, many times. And this is where, this is where if you do it right here, where your handle is going to uh, not come loose on you. So we can see on there, see the rub marks? Got the rub marks there from the, from the head. And that looks good So because we're coming in contact in almost all areas across here. See, it's where it's actually burnishing the wood. So we just go along here. And this is where this little knife is so wonderful, very controllable. And just go along there and just we're just matching. We're just matching what we have there. Take your time. If you get if you start coming against you know the grain changes on you there, just come back at you. Safety Sally started typing right there. Never cut towards yourself. Yeah, you know, the thing with never cut towards yourself. That's something you tell children uh, who are learning how to use and work with tools, right? And it's the same thing that comes up in the shop. You know, you whenever someone sees me put a hand plane down, face down on the bench, the reason why you think you should never do that is because shop teacher back in the day had to sharpen all those and he got tired of uh, kids putting them, sitting them down on the metal benches and on table saws and having to constantly sharpen them. So, you know, that was a, that was a, something they taught children because they didn't know any better. It doesn't apply to, to, 
us today. You know, you, if you're going to put a, you can put a plane down on a wooden bench um, with the blade down, it's not going to hurt a thing. You can cut towards yourself if you have been doing this and have experience and know what you're doing, you can do it safely. It's just a, I guess that's my pet peeve there. Okay, so we've kind of trimmed that up there. Let's make sure we're oriented the same way. See if we get any further. When you know you're getting close, make sure you pull it out and then get the uh, cut, get ready to cut your, your kerf. Uh, use a very a saw with a very fine set of teeth. Actually, I'm going to use my Japanese back saw here. It's a little even finer than that. Now the question is, how far, how far down do you go? Well. It kind of depends. You want to, as a rule of thumb, don't go any less than half of the thickness of the of the of the head, right? So you know, so somewhere down in there, I like to go a little bit further, even three quarters, because what happens is, you're, if you don't go deep enough, your wedge will bottom out. This is actually the a great saw for this because it doesn't have hardly any set in it so it's making a very small a very small uh, blade so what I'm talking about is your wedge so make sure that you understand exactly how far you went down and if you have your wedge ready that you're going to use take a pencil and line that up right to the bottom exactly where the top of that is. You don't want to drive it beyond. There's not going to be any point. You end up splitting the wood. So you want to be sure that you give yourself enough that you can get a, a nice proper wedge in there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go right there. Call that good. Okay, we're about flush with the top. Now we want to sit down hard on that shoulder. So we're, we're going to be pretty good. So to do the final seat, we don't want to hit it this way up. You want to hit the bottom of the handle. I'll show you why here. I just realized that I had uh, the wrong shutter speed set for my frame rate. So not sure how this video is going to look. Okay, anyway, we'll go with what we have. So once you get that uh, stuck on there pretty good, we're going to want to take a hammer that's got some weight to it um, and something usually a dead blow hammer or something this has a plastic plastic on it and we're gonna strike it in the bottom which sounds kind of counterintuitive but man nothing drives more force onto a handle than doing it that way you can see I gotta put a little chamfer on there this is true with any axe head or hatchet you do. And the, the trick is is to kind of hold it loosely in the hand. What you what you want is when you when you impact the handle, you want it to kind of slip through your hands a little bit and the mass of the head 